In this video, we will be looking at the fundamentals of fuel management in the Mirage 2000C. We will briefly go over the system and its configuration of fuel tanks, the TCC fuel control panel, the use of the detotalizer, how to dump fuel when necessary, and how to monitor the fuel situation in cockpit. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the thrilling and thirsty Mirage 2000C and today we will be looking at the basic principles of fuel management. Now with the right management, the Mirage 2000C can just about handle any sortie you may encounter in DCS world, in terms of having sufficient fuel to get you there and get you back alive. For its size and intended role, the aircraft has a decent fuel quantity and expansion options the in-cockpit controlling and monitoring of which are generally easy to understand. In this briefing, we will quickly go over the principles of the Mirage 2000C's fuel system. The internal fuel capacity of the Mirage 2000C is 3,160 kilograms, approximately 7,000 pounds for comparison with aircraft which use Imperial or US customary measurements. The fuel tanks are generally divided into two groups, left and right, symmetrically down the aircraft's centerline axis. The engine is supplied with fuel from the left and right feeder tanks, which flank the engine within the fuselage. Forward of these are the left and right forward fuselage tanks and a center fuselage tank. Each wing has two tanks for additional fuel storage. Fuel quantity can be expanded by the addition of external tanks, known as Reservoir Laguable or Reservoir Pendulaire in French. A centerline RP522 tank, two RP541 wingboard tanks, or a combination of all three can be equipped to significantly expand our fuel stores. It is the feeder tanks that directly provide fuel to the engine, requiring electrical power for two pumps. In turn, the feeder tanks are filled by the other tanks, first by any external tanks, and then by the remaining internal tanks. The center tank restocks the two fuselage tanks. This fuel transfer relies on engine bleed air to pressurize the system, and a dynamic balancer ensures that weight centering is maintained. If engine bleed air is not available, due to, for example, a malfunction, fuel transfer from the other tanks to the feeder tanks will not occur rendering only the fuel in the feeder tanks usable. The feeder tanks each hold 592.5 kilograms of fuel. The other internal tanks which supply these bring the total internal fuel to 3,160 kilograms. By equipping a full RP522 centerline external fuel tank, the total fuel is raised to 4,150 kilograms, approximately 9,150 pounds. By equipping all three external fuel tanks, the maximum fuel loadout of 7,310 kilograms, or approximately 16,100 pounds, can be achieved. Thank you for listening. Now let's see how this is applied and managed practically in our beloved Mirage 2000C. The majority of fuel management and monitoring is performed on this panel here, the TCC, the Tableau de Contrôle Carburant, or Fuel Control Panel. Here, various gauges and indicators help us monitor our fuel situation, primarily the two numerical gauges at the top, the two vertical scale gauges, and the indicator light panel in the center. We are currently sitting on the apron in a completely defueled aircraft with electrical ground power established. For our first task, we will ask the crew chief to fuel up our internal tanks to 100% using the rearm and refuel menu. Request refueling. Request rearming. Copy. We can see that as refueling begins, the yellow-amber light at the top of the panel illuminates, indicating that the aircraft is taking fuel. The numerical gauge, labelled Georges in the French cockpit, 
or gauge here in the English cockpit, is beginning to count up. This indicates our total internal fuel. We can also see that the bars on each of the vertical scale gauges are beginning to rise. These show the quantity of fuel in each of the feeder tanks that feed the engine, and should rise to the middle green marker at 450 kilograms. When this is reached, the amber indicator lights in the center should extinguish, indicating that the other internal fuel tanks are now taking fuel. When the other internal fuel tanks are full, at approximately 2,850 kilograms, the remaining space in the feeder tanks will fill, and the bars will continue to rise until they reach the upper green markers at 592.5 kilograms, just shy of 600 kilograms. With a full internal fuel load, the bars should read at the upper green markers, and the numerical gauge should read 3,160 kilograms, or thereabouts. Sensors within the internal fuel tank system ensure that the numerical gauge shows the remaining internal fuel with a small degree of error. Next, we will ask the crew to equip a full complement of reservoir pendulaire, or external fuel tanks, again using the rearm and refuel menu. Wingboard drop tanks are equipped on hard points 2 and 8, and the centerline tank on hard point 5. Notice that after the addition of the external fuel tanks, the fuel gauge has not changed save for a minor error. This is because the external tanks do not have suitable sensors to measure their fuel level. The Mirage can only detect when they are no longer supplying fuel and are, by inference, empty. Therefore, the fuel level must be set manually using the detotalizer switch. We can think of the left numerical gauge as the internal fuel indicator and the right numerical gauge as the total fuel indicator. After each refueling, the kneeboard will update with details of the fuel quantities added. So let's bring up the kneeboard and cycle to the pilot signout sheet. We can see here a schedule of the refuelings and are told that the current total fuel is 7,312 kilograms after equipping the tanks. This quantity we need to set on the right gauge, the detot, or remain gauge. This is done using the detotalizer switch labeled preset, or aft detot, located in the center of the fuel control panel. We should find that after engine startup, the external tanks will supply fuel to the feeders to maintain them at the upper green marker level. Hence, the right gauge will start to count down, as the fuel is used. The left gauge will remain set until all external fuel is used up. Under the Special tab in the DCS World Options, there is an option in the Mirage 2000C to automatically perform the detotalizer calculation. This ensures that after each refueling, the detot gauge will be set correctly without us having to manually set the amount using the switch. If this is not set, we must remember to reset the detot gauge, otherwise we will have an inaccurate picture of our total fuel. Okay, we are now airborne and obviously the engine is burning fuel. Notice that the vertical scale gauges, showing the fuel in the feeder tanks, those that directly supply the engine, are not depleting. This is because they are constantly being replenished by the other tanks. Fuel in the external tanks is used first. 
we can see that the detotalizer gauge is decreasing, but the internal gauge is not, showing that the external tank fuel is being used. Another indicator of the external fuel being used is that the feeder tank gauges will read at the upper green marker. The fuel flow indicator located here tells us the rate at which we are burning fuel in kilograms per minute. Here we have the afterburner lit, so the fuel consumption rate is very high. Disengaging the afterburner, and we can see that the rate drops considerably. It is always advisable to keep an eye on the fuel flow indicator, especially when in long-range transit or low-fuel situations. The Mirage 2000C cannot dump its internal fuel, but we can dump any fuel remaining in the external fuel tanks should we so desire. This is performed using the external fuel dump button here on the left console, labeled fuel dump or vide vite in the French cockpit, after lifting the safety cover. Be aware that the fuel dump cannot be stopped once we have started it. It will take approximately two and a half minutes to clear the RP522 centerline external fuel tank from full, and four minutes to clear each of the RP541 wingboard external fuel tanks from full. When the fuel dump is occurring, the amber transfer light will illuminate on the master warning light panel. Let us reset and assume we have not dumped our external fuel stores for the next section of the tutorial. After some time, two amber lights have illuminated in the center of the panel, here labeled ET, but labeled RL in the French cockpit. These lights are indicating that the two wingboard external fuel tanks are no longer transferring fuel. This means either that the tank transfer mechanism has suffered a failure, or more likely, as is the case here, that the tanks are now empty. In due time, our detotalizer gauge is coming into synchronization with the internal fuel gauge, meaning that all the external fuel is about to be expended. As we have a centerline external tank equipped, we should also see its end of fuel transfer light illuminate when this happens. The internal fuel tanks in the forward fuselage and wings only begin to supply fuel to the feeder tanks when the fuel level in the feeder tanks reaches 450 kilograms, indicated by the green middle marker. As we can see here, the vertical scale gauges are beginning to decrease and should normalize at the middle marker if all is functioning correctly. When this point is reached, the fuel in the forward and wing tanks will begin to be expended. The external fuel tanks cannot be individually jettisoned, only selectively jettisoned as a whole, so if we have all three equipped, we must wait until all three are empty before dropping them. As we have our three external tank indicator lights lit, it is now time to do so. As is typical, the Mirage 2000C is equipped with a bingo fuel selector, which will give us an audio-visual warning when fuel is low. Fuel states such as bingo and joker can be set using the drums on this panel here. Now the quantity that this is set to is obviously dependent on the mission parameters, but as an example, let us set it to 2000 kilograms. 
When the internal fuel gauge reaches this amount, the bingo alarm with its distinctive sound will emit, and the bingo fuel light will illuminate on the master warning light panel. Okay, we are about to hit the bingo fuel quantity. And we are alerted to the state by the warning sound and the bingo light. After this has sounded, we can reset the bingo quantity drums to another quantity if we wanted to be alerted again further down our fuel expenditure. Setting the drums to 1900 extinguishes the light, but will re-illuminate it when our new bingo quantity is reached. The remaining fuel in the forward group tanks and wing tanks have up until now been supplying the feeder tanks with fuel, maintaining a level in the feeder tanks of 450 kilograms, the middle green marker. When the fuel in the other internal tanks is expended, we will have approximately 900 kilograms of fuel left. The exhaustion of the other fuel is indicated by other lights on the central panel. AV lights, here labelled FR in the English cockpit, show the left and right forward fuselage tanks are now empty, or have suffered a fault. And if both are lit, the forward centre tank is also considered empty, being as it is connected to these. V lights, here labelled W in the English cockpit, indicate that the left and right wing tanks are now empty, or have suffered a fault. As the feeder tanks can no longer be replenished with any more fuel, the vertical scale gauges will once again begin to fall. Should there be an imbalance in the feeder tanks due to some form of transfer failure, this crossfeed switch would ordinarily be used to rebalance the weight. However, this is not functional in DCS world. This switch the transfer test switch is also not functional. When the feeder tank fuel level reaches the red markers, the so-called niveau mark or critical fuel level mark, the aircraft will only have a total of 500 kilograms of fuel left. This is further indicated by the illumination of the niveau or level light on the master panel. As most of the other systems rely on the engine to provide electrical and hydraulic power through generators and pumps, we will very quickly lose these systems when the engine shuts down through lack of fuel. So we've got a fuel pump failure and an electrical alternator failure for AC power. We'll soon lose that once the battery is expended. We have low oil pressure and our hydraulic pressure is now dropping. In this situation, we could try to dead stick it, and if necessary, as a demonstration, we could drop the landing gear using the emergency handle on the left there. But given the terrain and our location, we're probably going to have to bail out.
Well, as ever, I hope that was useful for you. Fuel management is of course essential when flying, and in our next tutorial we will look at air-to-air -air refueling to help prevent situations like our bailout there. With continued thanks to my patrons, especially Yan11, Lakota21, Plabs, Starlover and Ben, and indeed everyone who has supported me over the last 12 months. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment and share, but until next time, virtual aviators, I look forward to seeing you online in the skies. This is Reva saying last call. 